So I'll keep this one quick, mainly because it's late, late for me, and I'm on the West Coast, and I'm sure most of you in Chicago are probably already in bed by now, if you even made it to the end of this game. I barely did myself, but because it's late, the Bulls got crushed. I've got a guest coming on tomorrow morning on the channel, stay tuned for that, by the way. We'll do a quick recap here. The Bulls sucked it up tonight, and that really applies to both ends of the floor. I mean, it didn't really help that the Lakers win off and have one of the best games of their season, of course, naturally. Seems to happen a lot to the Bulls against some of the struggling teams in the NBA, kind of like what we saw a couple weeks ago against the Golden State Warriors. The Lakers at halftime were shooting something like 62% from the field around the same percentage from three, and I thought there's no way they're going to be able to maintain that going into the second half. But no, they basically just kept up the hot shooting throughout this game. And of course, one of the most inconsistent shooters in the game of basketball, a guy who had two points against the Bulls in the first matchup at the United Center, D'Angelo Russell, of course, lit up the Bulls and had one of the hottest games for him of the season, hitting eight threes in just the first three quarters alone. You know, typical stuff. Lakers shot 60% from the field in this game. They shot 65% from three. 20 for 31 from the three-point line. This, of course, being one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the league, dead last in volume, 28th in the league in three-pointers made, they go 20 for 31 from behind the arc in this game. Just maddening, really. Tonight, not much energy from the Bulls. A good first quarter where there was a lot of back and forth, a bunch of lead changes, and really, until those final two minutes in the second quarter, they were actually keeping things competitive. But then, they had that terrible ending to the quarter where the Lakers went on a 12-0 run to go up 16 at halftime. Bulls played sloppy basketball, excessive amounts of turnovers, bad fouls, little hustle, poor defense. I mean, credit to the Bulls that they kind of came back and made it a game there at the end where they cut the lead to single digits in the final minutes after being down by more than 20 in the fourth quarter alone, but it just wasn't enough to dig themselves out of that deep hole that they put themselves in when they finally started hitting shots and playing more consistently on offense, but they weren't able to get enough stops to really make meaningful traction earlier on for a chance for them to win this game. And this was tough, a tough loss for the Bulls because this is a game the Bulls needed to have against a Lakers team that, yes, yeah, still a good team. They have two of the most talented players in the NBA on their roster, multiple days off of the Bulls, and to let a team that isn't known for their three-point shooting to torch you like that is incredibly frustrating. I said before the Suns game, after the Bulls blew that big lead and lost the game in the final seconds, losing that game was so costly and a shot at their confidence in starting off this road trip. And rather than coming into LA on a three game winning streak and with both teams like the Lakers and the Blazers ahead of them, they could have been looking at going above 500 by the end of this trip. But instead, now you've got a team back to four games below 500 and don't sleep on the Blazers. They're playing much better basketball, a young, fast, athletic team that is trying to prove themselves. They cannot take those guys lightly. But anyway, it just wasn't in the card tonight for the Bulls. You could tell they weren't as engaged, weren't as focused, turning the ball over 16 times in this one. They crashed the offensive glass well, especially in the first half, but couldn't capitalize on those second chance opportunities. So many offensive rebounds, and the Bulls would just clank the next shot. Bulls didn't shoot the three ball well at 32%. What's crazy is that the Bulls actually shot the ball well overall, 53%, but that's really because neither side played defense at all. The Bulls' big three, I mean, I guess if you want to call it that with no Zach Levine and putting Kobe in that spot, but their three main scores, we'll call it that, all had 20 or more points in this game. DeMar was an efficient 10 for 14 from the floor, 11 for 12 from the free throw line, 32 points, had 10 assists in this game. Vucevic, 20 and 8, was 9 for 12. Hell, he even had a couple of threes tonight, which seems like a rarity these days. Kobe White, 25 points, 7 rebounds, struggled with his outside shot, going 3 for 10. And then Caruso as well, revenge game for him, 17 points, 6 assists, 2 steals, and 2 blocks. Hell, even Io and Drummond were each in double figures tonight. Six players in double figures, and yet the Bulls still got blown out, even though the final score doesn't make it look like a blowout, but it was. But yeah, I guess a game like this is good in some regards because I think with the way the Bulls were playing better more recently, it was almost getting to a place where the front office might not have treated the season with any sense of urgency and gotten a little too complacent. They might still not view it in that way regardless, but games like this where the Bulls have a flat, sloppy, lackluster game and now fall four games below 500 should hopefully say not. Nah. Changes still need to be made, and they need to happen fast because we're now two weeks away from the trade deadline. Hopefully, Bulls get their act together and going into Portland, a rebuilding team, and having another two days off before taking on the Blazers for a Sunday evening game. But let me know what you guys thought of the game tonight. 
Hope you guys get some good rest, some good sleep. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.